Hi, everybody, and welcome to another video for Channel 3 and All Drafts. We're going to do another Strixhaven traditional draft. This is the sealed weekend. So at some point, uh, I'll play, uh, I'll try to basically qualify in the sealed championship as well for day two. It's going to be a bit later. So let's see what we have here. We open Witherbloom Command, which is pretty good. Target player mills three cards, and then you return a land card from your graveyard to your hand. Destroy target non-creature, non-land permanent. Okay, that's not relevant. Minus three, minus one. Eh. Uh, sorcery. Target opponent loses two life and you gain two life. It's okay, it's not it's not that great. I think maybe just uh, cultivate might be the better pick. There's also an environmental sciences. I think I'm just gonna take environmental sciences from this pack. Yeah, I think this is the this is the more responsible pack one uh, pick one. It's colorless is going to go into any deck. I think cultivate might be a bit stronger. I mean, with a bloom command is cool, but like, why take a two color card which you know has a twenty percent chance? Okay, maybe a bit more than twenty percent chance. Let's say you've got thirty three percent chance of making your deck. I'm not a big fan of that. So now we have. <laughs> this is cute, but not something I'm really interested in. I'm not even sure how split second works, to be honest. There's a Frost Trickster. There's also a Rise of Exodus. So this can also go into Lore Hold or Wither Bloom. I think I gotta take this just because it goes into more decks. Like you can find double weight for this. Wow, now this is gonna be a very hard pick. So there's uh, Zimone. There's also a tenured incaster. I think Zimone's just gas. Cards like this should just read like uh, one green, one blue, and then the text should read, slowly win the game as long as this, this creature remains on the battlefield. In most cases, of course. But, I mean, if you're way behind, it's not going to save you, but I, I think it's a very strong card. Okay, okay, so now there's a creative outburst, but there's also an Aether Helix. Return target permanent to its owner's hand. Return target permanent card from your graveyard to your hand. So this only lets you target your graveyard. There's also Introduction to Prophecy. These, these cards, I think, go much later, but this is in our colors. Rise might be a wasted pick. Double black, double white, it's not easy to splash. Um, okay, given what we're seeing, yeah, I should have taken the, the flyer, but I think this is still fine. Okay, so now we have another Ether Helix. Let's just get untapped.gg up. Because I don't remember all of the rankings. I have, an, I have a pretty good idea of where I like these cards on my own, but uh, I do like the rankings from limited resources. I think it's a very useful, uh, very useful tool. So probably just a Eureka moment or a second Aether Helix. I think the second one, it's not that it's necessarily worse, but I'd rather have like one Eureka moment, one Aether Helix rather than two of either one of those. Okay, so now we have, that's a really good card. Fortunately, it's gonna be very tricky for us to splash it. We could try to splash Elemental Masterpiece. There is a Reckless Amplomancer, but I do like Decisive Denial because this is an instant speed counter for a non-creature spell, mind you. So any instant sorceries, artifacts, or it's an instant speed fight spell. Kind of like that, we're gonna pick one up. This is actually the first time I'm drafting Quandrix in this format, but I do believe it's it's one of the better archetypes. Okay, so another Eureka moment. So now we're looking for some big plays. We have a, plenty of enablers. We got Zimone for card draw. We got we got two Eureka moments for card draw. I mean, I'm not looking to have that much card draw. Wow, that's annoying. That needs to go away. Okay, let's close that. 
But what else am I taking? I, I could care less about this. I guess I could take a teach by example, but I think second year eureka moment is still fine because this also ramps. I mean, this lets you play a land out. I think it's fine. Okay, arcane subtraction or the fuddler. I think the fuddler's fine. Campus guide. I don't think I'm going to need in a deck like this. I'm not looking to splash anything yet. It's not realistic to splash Rise of Exodus. It's not even that good, to be honest. Uh, okay, it's good, but it, what I mean is it's not like the, the, the sacrifice that you would have to make by ensuring consistent two black or white mana by turn six is totally not worth it. All right, so now we can take Biblioplex Assistant, putting an Aether Helix on top of your library. That's an infinite loop. Short. Again, the stuff that I'm looking for are, at this point, any big creatures. I'm looking for, obviously, Bookworm is, is one of the best cards I can open. I have plenty of uh, enablers. Now I just need you know big, big, stupid creatures that can attack. Take a 3-2. This one's fine. Um, probably just want the croc, right? <laughs> no amount of graveyard synergy will ever get me to play this card. Listen, I'll bring in the wall against uh, a super aggressive lower hold deck. All right, so the best card in here, I think by far is Professor of Symbology, but uh, I think we just want the Quandrix Pledge Mage. This is gonna be a key card for our deck. We have five non-creature spells. So we have one Aether Helix, two Eureka Moments, Environmental Sciences should be in the sideboard. I mean, I'll keep it here for now just so that I can keep in mind that it's it's not really difficult to splash. There's also an Elemental Summoning here, but I think uh, the Wondrix Pledge Mage is a very important component. I'm not even looking at that Symmetry Sage and Serpentine Curve can go later, and it actually wants to be uh, more in the Prismari deck, I think, not in the Quandrix deck. There's also an Adventures Impulse, but again, we're not splashing any bombs, so I'm happy taking a 2-2 that's often going to become massive. Tainted Pact, exile the top card of your library, you may put that card into your hand, unless it has the same name as another card, exile this way, repeat this process until you put a card into your hand, or you exile two cards of the same name, whichever comes first. Interesting. Well, I don't think we can take this. It is the best card by far. I think we probably just want this Ryland. Maybe a field trip. Now I'll take a field trip. Field trip is fairly important for a deck like this. Okay, so now we're, we see a second uh, pledge mage. I have a feeling we're going to end up splashing red. Just my, my intuition at this point, but something tells me that uh, there's other players taking taking our cards. Oh, there's the bookworm. That's that's what I really really want. Perfect card for us. We have ramp, we have everything. Now we just need things that can rumble. Needle Thorn Greg is excellent. Taking that over expanded anatomy. And I'm getting very close to the point where I'm just going to take uh, lesson cards over good playables, but Needle Thorn Drake with uh, Ether Helix, that's something that can stop a lot of uh, a lot of aggression. This does not want to be in the Quandrix deck at all. So here's, yeah, this is where I'm taking 
fractal summoning or anything else, and it's perfect because it's in our colors. It makes it easier to cast. Kelpie Guide is perfect because now we get to ramp. So what I want for this deck is like one more Bookworm, one more huge uh, blue or green or any combination of the above creature or like big, big expensive, uh, big expensive spell. I'm not going to take a third Eureka moment here. I am going to take a Vortex Runner. This is a good finisher. And again, it syncs with uh, Ramp because with Field Trip, double Eureka moment and Zimone, we're going to get to eight often. Okay, I think maybe here I can take the Serpentine Curve, but no, actually no, I don't have enough creatures for that. Third Eureka moment, is there anywhere where I can sideboard next? No, I think I'm just gonna take another Eureka moment. I'm not necessarily playing all three, but our deck is not trying to win with the stadium. Our deck is, is not trying to, like the thing with the stadium is, if you have a lot of small creatures attacking, I think it's good. I don't remember exactly the text, but I think it's like whenever damage is dealt. So it's better if you're going wide. If you're relying on a bookworm to just smash for a bunch of trample or like a 6-6 six, six pledge mage, you really don't need that to be winning. So I don't think that's something we need. Now I'll gladly snap up introduction to annihilation for the sideboard. If that wasn't in the pack, I would take a negate for the sideboard. And I think negate, like I mentioned before, it's better in this format, especially against uh, Prismari uh, with some of those expensive spells. All right, so now I have two decisive denials. I guess the croc knows how to fight, but I'm not playing two crocs. Great sideboard card. Nice. So there's the second bookworm. Yeah, this deck is just went from like a B to a P, B plus with that one pick. <laughs> Yeah, I'm not. I'm not crazy about that. I'm not crazy about that card. That this this card's a trap. This card's a trap. So probably just another either helix, right? Maybe we just want to. We could also. I could also see wanting. Oh no, there's a burying bucks now. I'm definitely taking burying bucks now. I didn't see that the first time. My mistake. Yeah, I think Burying Bucks is a little bit better than an Aether Helix here. Because this is often going to be three mana. And uh, with, with the Eureka moments and uh, Zimone activations and Decisive Denials, like you're going to be leaving mana up quite a bit. So it's not going to be difficult to get value from that. All right, so how many, I mean, I, I really don't, really, I don't need my, more card draw. Like I'm, I'm looking at decking myself at this point. Uh, I'd sooner take like random sideboard cards. And this is like, this is 23 playables already, right? So do I really need a brainstorm? Just another intro to Annihilation. There's another Burian book though. All right, so if I'm not playing two Crocs, I can see taking another Burian Bucks. All right, let's get this out of here. So this is 22 playables. Probably not playing with the system. Come on. It's just not necessary. So do I want a pop quiz or do I want my second campus? I think I want a pop quiz.
over the arcane subtraction. Yeah. Cultivator is excellent. I do want an elemental summoning, but I mean, like, let's see what I have in my in my sideboard. So I have one fractal summoning, one intro to annihilation, and one environmental sciences. I'll take the turtle. Because I'm not playing uh, three Eureka moments, I don't think. Ah, oh, that's a perfect card. Trickster over the Drake. I think so. I think that's correct. So I was wrong about splashing red, by the way. It's totally not necessary. My gut feeling was wrong on that. All right, so let's take out one. Get arcane subtraction, I guess. Ooh. When uh, Manifestation Sage enters the battlefield, create a zero, zero green and blue fractal creature. Put X plus one plus counters on it, or X is the number of cards in your hand. I think that's pretty good, right? I have a ton of card draw. So this is like, basically it'll usually be like a two, two and a three, three. So like two bodies, five, five worth of stats for four mana. It's generally fine. I can see like square up for sideboard, maybe. Uh, another Aether Helix. How many creatures do I have? 14. I'll take another Aether Helix. That doesn't seem very good. <laughs> Seems more fancy than actually good. Oh, nice, we get another one. I'll play two. Curial transformation goes here. Cram session is actually a, a legit sideboard card against some matchups. Very happy having that, just to have access to it. And a gift needle thorn rake. I mean, that's just excellent. And the Eureka moment. So, more Eureka moments, probably too much. So definitely 17 lands. Uh, I don't think I want the Karak. So. So I need to make three cuts. So one Eureka moment. Maybe we don't need an arcane subtraction. It, it is nice with Needlethorn Drake, right? Right, I think it is. I think it is good. It's gonna to be tough making these cuts here, two cuts. I think I'm gonna cut one decisive denial. Um, yeah, because I mean, the, the two best creatures that I have for fighting are the Pledge Mages. This does expose you to getting blown out. Non-creature spell doesn't come up as much. I think one is fine because we also have like a Frost Trickster, two Burian Books, two Aether Helix. Like we have so much bounce. Bounce is removal when you're, uh, when you're trying to gain momentum. Because once the Bookworm comes down, I mean, you can, you can always get it back from your graveyard, replay it, draw more cards. So let's try like this. Let's keep.
All right, I'm gonna play a uh, cram session. Resolves. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna decisive denial that. Next turn would be sweet for a manifestation sage. I'd get a two, two, and a five, five. I'm all for that. Not quite. So what's the plan? We just, I guess, attack and play like a vortex runner. Is that fractal summoning? Well, fractal summoning is not not really a threat between Needle Thorn Drake and um, uh, Aether Helix and Frostrift, but I guess it's not it's not going to be a concern. It's only a three three right now, anyway. Yeah, sorry about the noise. I just lit a cigarette for a minute, but it's gonna it's gonna air out, and then I'll close the door. Hopefully, we're not gonna have too much background noise from the road outside. Uh, I think this is a good time for manifestation stage. It's not gonna you're not gonna get better than a two two and a four four, so that's fine. And now we have a good creature for decisive denial. I think we're way ahead now. Maybe between what's on the board and what's in our hand. Again, unless this is some sort of weird sweeper that... All right, all right, so now let's go. Just go Frost Trickster, tap that down and get it for eight. Okay, okay. Getting Manifestation Sage back from the graveyard, I guess it could also be a thing. Uh, so do we want to use like, I guess we can go Arcane Subtraction and then if he's got an effect, we can either just counter it with Decisive Denial or fight in response. So let's send a team in. Okay, so let's uh, let's decisive denial that because I don't really want to sacrifice a creature. So Umbral Juke gets countered, and then we can still arcane subtraction to keep our creature alive, and then draw. I don't know what we want to draw. Maybe just environmental sciences, right? Okay. All right. So in terms of sideboarding, I can potentially see adding one more decisive denial. If I can find my worst card in 10 seconds, if not, I'm just gonna take it out. Just same same deck. Okay, so so if I was opponent, I would attack into Zimone with the best uh, bluff attack without even thinking about it because. Most people are not blocking with Zimone, really. Uh, this is instant, right? So 
I guess we want to play it now in case we get a land so that we can. No, that's not going to work. That's not going to work. Uh... All right, we just pass and then play pop quiz. End of our opponent's turn. The stress enough. That girl does not look like a college student. She looks like a haggard woman, recovering, recovering alcoholic. <laughs> uh, okay, let's count that before uh, before that resolves. Environmental sciences looks good to me. Then we can double spell, spell and play environmental sciences into a needle thorn drake. Well, now we can. Now we have some other options. We can still go needle thorn into environmental sciences. We can also just go get a land right away. In the next turn, we'll have six mana. So in case we draw a three drop, we can play environmental sciences in the, in the three drop. Or we can go environmental sciences, needle thorn drake. All right, let's go turtle because this can block without having to trade. And let's go get an island. And fortunately, we don't have a land to put into play with, but yeah, but we can, hopefully we can double spawn next turn, use up all our mana. Okay, now we can, do we have anything in the sideboard? We don't, so. Okay. Burying, burying books can, uh, can get inkling summoning. So then let's just play environmental sciences and then keep our burying books. We can also draw two of Zimon. Maybe drawing two is better. Ah, it's draw one. It's it's draw two on me if you have eight lands. I'd still rather uh, draw a card here, I think. Seven mana. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So let's go. So we want to trade off Needle Thorn Drakes to get it back with Aether Helix. And let's pass. Again, keeping up Zimone's ability in case opponent just chooses not to attack. That's a good place to put it. Just gaining a life off Arch. And look at this, our opponent has two cards in hand. We have a lot. So let's go burying books. Let's get rid of that. Sure. This could become annoying. This makes a pest every time uh, Magecraft triggers. Okay. 
So we can play Frost Trickster, leave up four for Zimone, and then get an attack in. I like that idea. Which one of these do I want to tap? I guess this one, because it has Menace. No, I'm gonna right, I'm gonna tap the five five. What what why? Why is it asking me if I want to target Hodge Mage? Did I misclick something? I don't get it. Okay. And I don't see a reason not to attack. So now we get two shots out of land. There it is. Okay, so now let's go. Let's attack first with the flyers. I mean, we could just. You know, if they have removal for the worm, we can just aether helix and bring it back that way. That's, that saves us a turn in, in three mana. I'm happy with that. So I'm just gonna. Okay, never mind. That's opponent's had enough. He didn't even see what I mean. He doesn't know what's in my hand, but he sees that my hand is stacked. So probably the right decision. Probability of winning there is quite low for OP. So not, not a great hand, but we can make it work. We got uh, the Fuddler, two Drakes, Zimone that we can draw. Let's keep it. Uh oh. Uh oh. I think uh, I think we're about to get punished. That is that is not the card you want to see when you when you keep a, a land with the uh, lands and four drops. I just notice he's got a he's got a metal around his neck. Oh, well, maybe we can counter something here. Could be an inkling summoning, but probably probably not. No spells. All right. So now I don't see a reason not to play the good old turtle. Hmm. Probably the bookworm. If I was him, I'd exile the bookworm, make it cost 10 instead of eight. Right? That's just what I would do. Because that effect's still there regardless of what happens to Spellbinder. Yep. Just the correct play. We'll still get the 10 mana with the Eureka moment. 
no, no doubts about that. So let's main phase this in case we find something else we want to play. Submit and I will attack here. And let's decisive denial now. I don't think there's anything for one mana that gets me too bad. There's the plus one plus one spell that. Uh, yeah, that's the one I was thinking of. Make your mark. I mean, it's this creature still dies. He just gets a one mana three two. Good target for either helix. Getting turtle back's not bad either. We 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 ramp even quicker. All right, so so let's go Eureka moment. Put a land into play and an Aether Helix. We get the turtle, and next turn we can play bookworm. Okay, okay. We may very well die, unfortunately. Uh, and that shield mage is also a problem. He can give flying to the 3 2 by exiling a card. But let's just play the worm, gain life, draw a card. So we're at 11. Frost Trickster is actually a very good draw. Uh, they can block the flying spirit. It can tap down shield mage if we want to take three. But I need to deal with the shield mage at, somehow. So I'm going to take three, four, five, six, seven. I'm going to take seven here and go to four. That's not good. So if I go to four, I bounce the shield mage, I go to one. I guess we need to find the other bookworm. And there's about a 5% chance of that happening. Wow, that is not the play I thought opponent would be making. Does he not have any creature? Does this say creature card? No, any card. So why is he not exiling? That's so strange. That's great for us. And another one. All right. Hmm. I think we need to attack.
So let's go turtle, get a land. Now we have seven, so we can do Frost Trickster. Tapping down the two, three. So we don't have to take any damage. And we can even play the campus. And we keep our burial books. Okay. Seems like something that can work here. Still taking six damage. But I can crack back for lethal now. So you've got to leave something back. Okay. So if I bury in books, so if he's got nothing else, if I bury in books the three, two, I can crack back for lethal and I'm only taking six. If he has a pump spell, I lose, but I think this is my best way to win the game because without this, this is 10, not 11. So let's just bury in books this and go to damage, no blocks. Yes. All right, that was the correct play. My, my initial gut instinct was to block there, but that that would be the wrong play. I do think we want to tangle trap though. I don't mind paying three life and two mana to get rid of those uh, Alwyn shield mages. Do we want a cram session? I think maybe we want to. Well, we're on the play now, right? So we don't need it as much. Maybe I'll bring this in game three. If we go to if we go to game three. So we need to remove something for Tangle Trap, which would probably be, I still like burying books because they, the, they have the tokens. Not sure if it's that much better than Arcane Subtraction, but yeah, I'll still take Arcane Subtraction out. So that leaves me with what? Pop quiz, field trip. Pop quiz and field trip. I don't care. I mean, we have so much card draw. Like we don't. I don't even care about the fractal summoning summoning you in my sideboard. I just want to get to the worm quicker. So it's interesting to know that we still want that game, even though we have to pay ten to cast our our game winning card. That's how much RAM Quandrix has. I'm not gonna mulligan, uh, I'm not gonna mulligan this. One of these is almost like a dead card. So it's almost, it's basically like keeping a multi six hand with two two lands, keeping a seven hand, seven mana hand like this or seven, seven card hand like this. Although who knows? Maybe we'll even be able to cast both. That's a great draw. Yeah, I think overall the work is possible. I've been looking at the message of this is how this is based on podcasts, but it's really large and large economic messages. And that's not my favorite. For some reason, the limited resources just turned on by itself on my phone. That was very weird.
Yeah, we're just going to pass and uh, play Eureka moment. No land. Ouch. This is this is now a problem because all those can fly. If I play a needle for Drake, I'm not using my mana, but I have a blocker. If I play Eureka Moment, I'm taking more damage. Maybe I'll find two lands and I can play both. No, that's not, oh God, that's terrible. Now I got to discard. What am I discarding? Like a permanent? Let's discard a bookworm. Can always get it back for three mana anyway. That was rough. We had quite a few shots of drawing lands there. Five cards we can draw lands. All right. Yeah, I mean, we're probably going to go to one and one now. Still no land. I guess we can play Fanatic, okay. It's a lot of pressure. All right, so we did find the land there. So we could try to decisive denial, but I'd rather just have a needle thorn drake because you have you can have that one mana card again, and then I'm just dead. The plus three plus two, the plus three plus one. Sorry, plus one plus zero. When the creature dies, you make a three two. Reduce two memory. Oh, he tapped both. Yeah, study break. Okay, okay. So, do we say that we would bring in the wall? I think we want to cram such a movie. This just trades for for a two two. So I don't I don't think this is very exciting. This is a good blocker. Maybe we just want like a spined Karak over a Vortex Runner. I think that's correct. And then Cram Session. This does help us find the Bookworm. I'm not gonna mess. I'm not gonna mess with the deck. I think it's a good deck. I think we got mana screwed. We missed a land drop off five chances, which is not something that happens often. By the way, I did not change that avatar. That's so weird that I have the avatar. 
I should have desert. I don't like that. Let's keep. Killing is good. Next turn, we can double ramp. We can play Cultivator and play another land with uh, Zimone. S seems pretty sweet. So. Let's go Cultivator, put a land on the battlefield. And then I can tap for one to put the island into play. And I don't see a reason. Well, no, I don't want to attack because I'd rather threaten the double block on the duelist, right? So no attacks. Okay. All righty. I think we just want a big, big threatening fractal summoning and we can play the fuddler at instant speed so let's just pass no attacks can't exile anything from his graveyard either so there's no way to kill him from game flying which is good Okay, okay. So let's see what he decides to do. This could be a good spot for Befuddler here. If he pumps the spirit and offers the trade, I can just eat the spirit. Okay, okay. No attacks then, I imagine. I don't even think there's a need to play with other, not, not in this spot. So why can't I cast this? Because I have a permanent card in my graveyard. Okay, that's right. So we could play a 5-5 five, five Fractal Summoning. We can also just pass and keep up card draw of Zimone, and then we'll have access to burying books and the Fuddler. I think that's fine. I just noticed he's got Killian on his card sleeves and he's got a Killian on the board. Nice flavor, nice flavor one.
Oh, okay. I mean, if you're doing that, then uh, I guess I'll just block like this. The reason I'm blocking with the two two instead of the three four is because if he's got a pump spell, even the plus one plus zero, it's going to be a bigger blowout with burying books. In this case, I'm just, I'm going to take three. I'm going to see where he puts the counter, and then I can always just elect to bounce that creature. Okay. So, I mean, to be honest, we don't we don't even need to bounce that. But he could start giving him flying now. So yeah, let's just bounce it. And let's play the father to take one less damage. Oh, that was after damage already? I screwed that up. Never mind. Never mind. The size of the denial is a good card to have in this spot. So we got two cards. Sure. I'm not going to play Decisive Denial into open mana. Okay, well, now I can play Decisive Denial end of turn. Uh, I'd rather Decisive Denial. It's just three life, right? I just want to make sure it's not mana. Yeah. Yes. So I go to 11. Okay. So I can make it 2-2. Two, two. Does it sound exciting? So let's go Eureka moment first. So now we can make a four four. Oh no, still, still now now we can make a three three. Before I guess we could also make a three three. I think we might as we may as well make use of this now. And don't really want to attack with anything. So the frustrating part is I still don't have a permanent in my graveyard that I can get back because I haven't had an opportunity to trade anything. So what I'm hoping is that my opponent is going to get flying to like the Leech Fanatic. But he would probably just yeah, give it to the Lower Hulk Pledge Mage. And then I'm taking six and I'm going to five. I guess I can trade with the Stone Rice Spirit.
I'm actually going to chum block with the frost trickster because I need a permanent to get back from my graveyard. And this will help us stabilize so we can find worms or something to negate this nonsense. So let's go Aether Helix. Let's bounce. Combat Professor. Get back Frost Trickster. And we want to tap down. We want to tap down the Pledge Mage. And in terms of attacks, I think we can send the 3 3 to 2 2. And I'm debating whether or not to send to the Fuddler. I guess maybe this is a better attack. Maybe I'm being a bit too conservative, but I need to start getting some getting some damage in here as well. I mean, in retrospect, it wasn't the best attack because he can chump with Star Pupil and then he can put the counter on Stone Rice Spirit and then he gets through Frost Trickster. Not much I can do about that. So he's going to probably take Needlethorn Drake. Again, it doesn't matter. I have nine mana. I can play it. But I'm actually happy he played it because now he can play the uh, combat veteran. So I take one less damage from the Stone Rise Spirit. Unless, unless it's last part of the land. Pop oh, quiz, okay. That's, that's an interesting one. Yeah, non-land, you could have taken anything. All right, so I go to four here. And he wants to offer Leech Fanatic trade. Okay, I'll trade. I guess maybe Manifestation Sage is better. No, because that's still get the Needle Thorn back if I get another Aether Helix so let's block like this. Sure, that that I don't care about at all. All right, we can still we can still win this game. We can still win this game. OK, 
can we win this game? <laughs> I'm not even sure now. I needed to play Kelpie Guide a turn earlier. So I'm not dead. I can I can trade for two things. I have to take two from the Pledge Mage, but I can kill off the other things and I can start blocking. So if I get a, well, now with Pop Quiz, I can go find Introduction to Annihilation and actually like, I'm still alive. This is still, this is definitely a live game. And I know what his last two cards are. So we're definitely not dead. We're definitely not dead here. This is a great topper for us. Okay. Uh huh. So probably just want to trade like this. Okay. okay. All right. All right. All right. Let's go pop quiz, draw a card, introduction to annihilation, exile spirit. Wow, this is a close game. And so I can tab down, I can tab this thing. This is gonna be a three power first strike vigilance. Just thinking how I wanna attack. Like he, he's only attacking with one creature next turn. But I still wanna be able to kill it. I guess I need to leave back manifestation sage in like the three three to have good blocks. So let's attack with the Needle Thorn Drake. And that's it, I guess. Yeah, we should we should attack with this as well. At this point, I don't mind double blocking with uh, Zimon.
So whosoever creature's power he, bo he boosts, that's the one that I'm going to block, uh, that I'm going to tap. All right, that's a good one. So let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So that's not quite lethal. So I need to keep both my flyers back so I can attack like this, like this. cards that have 10 cards left i think that's fine we're gonna we're gonna win this thing i'm just i'm not gonna i'm not gonna get greedy i don't think i need to get greedy i'm just more concerned like i don't i don't screw this up somehow That was, a, that was a close one. Sorry if it felt a bit grindy, but I wanted to make sure I don't score anything up. I heard a really good magic player say one time that it's it's never really terrible to take too much time to think through a turn to consider all the possible poss all the possibilities because you're maximizing um, you know whatever edge you have at that point and. There, there could have been, uh, I don't know, there could have been a removal spell that could have gotten me. Of course, if you had the card draw spell, I was dead anyway. But since, since, I, since I didn't have lethal that, that turn, there was really no difference with attacking with one more or one less creature. 
So no green mana. And I'm on the play. So seven, four, so I have a 30%, 29% chance, 27% chance. Okay. Okay, that's a good target to get back with Aether Helix, actually. It'll ramp us even more. Okay. Let's get a forest now. Seven lens left in our deck out of 26 cards. This is a great time to draw a worm, especially if one is tapped out. Oh, yeah. Oh, I forgot to scry. Can I still scry? Yeah, I can still scry. So, let's pass and scry end of our opponent's turn. I'm, I missed the scry and upkeep though. I'd still probably keep this on top. It's a creature that's gonna grow with everything else we have in our deck. Yeah, we have nine more instances of sorcery, so. And if we find a land, we can always scry. Oh no, we're gonna keep that on top. If this was a if this was a land, then so the question is, do we even need to use it now or can we hold on to it? I'd rather get back needle thorn drake. So I think we can just chill. I don't I don't really see I don't feel like there's a sense of urgency for me to cast this right now. He's got a handful of threats. And I just need to find find the worm. Plus, if he wants to keep eating spells with this, I'm fine with that. The bigger that is by the time I bounce it, the more damage our opponent is going to do to himself by exiling cards from his graveyard because then it turns off cards like Pillow Drop Warden. I mean... It, I'm pr I probably am, I'm probably not even activating Tom Shredder with a Needlethorn Drake in the battlefield if I'm my opponent, because then 
unless I know I have removal for this. Because it just seems like a waste of resources. Okay. Tricksters is fine. I'm actually going to tap this down for a turn. I'll offer the trade with the spectacle mage, and then I'll bounce the shredder, bring back my Ether Felix. Oh, sorry. Uh, I mean, I'll bring back my Frost Trickster. I will offer to trade off these two. So against Prismari, I'm definitely bringing in the, the second copy of the size of denial. Uh, I don't think there's anything else, but this is going to be a tough matchup. Okay. That's exactly the block that I wanted there. See what we get, bottom that. And let's do it again on upkeep because I, I have enough to scry and play E3 Helix. Yeah, let's stop that, why not? Okay, let's draw it. How's that? Get back my Frost Trickster or Pledge Mage, actually. Interesting. That's an interesting, that's not a, that's not an obvious choice. I want to get the Pledge Mage, actually. So we know that he's splashing for green, but we don't know what it is. It could be, it could be a worm easily. That's a totally splashable card. Yeah, Kelpie guys, it's Tapper. Just taps their best thing. So very happy picking that up. What you can do about that, but I'd rather the Kelpie guy gets countered than the worm. So. In some respect, I'm I'm happy with that. Oh no, cancel attacks. What am I doing? No attacks. Uh oh.
Still found the land. That's okay. So let's go pledge mage. Keeping up arcane subtraction and pass. I mean, Tome Shredder and uh, Field Historic and Historian, that's definitely a combo. My turtles would stop all of these, but this thing is plus one plus zero. So four, two spirits are definitely a problem for me. They can become a problem at some point. Another Tome Shredder, however, is definitely not a problem. I think he's getting, he's gonna get desperate and start attacking with the four, two. That's my guess. And I probably need to get intro to annihilation for uh, for the field historian because because why? Because I don't know. I'm still getting a. Uh, although at this point maybe a fractal summoning is just ridiculous as a nine nine. Also pumps my pledge mages. I'll go with the. Yeah, I'll go with the uh, fractal summoning. I'm not gonna play. I'm not gonna play around another world one denial. I'm just gonna card cast it, and Okay, if he's got another one of these, God bless him. But I usually don't see people playing more than one in their deck because it is uncommon, right? Yeah, it's uncommon. And it's a mystical archive, so it's like an even rarer uncommon in that regard, I think. I'm not sure exactly how the rarities work, but... So... I'm going to offer the trade now for the Pillar Drop Warden because the pillar drop warden is a good uh good blocker it stops the five five pledge mage This is this is a weird weird Quandrix deck our opponent's playing. It's usually it's got more creatures than those decks want typically. Field trip's fine. So let's send the 9 9 and hope he's got bad blocks. In fact, I'm going to send both of these to increase the chances of 
an incorrect block, and then hopefully we can get some value from the bubbler. So that's six. So I guess he's playing around the fuddler with those blocks. That's fine. And then he's just jumping with Pillar Warden. I guess that's fine by me. Still good blocks for me. Okay, that was not, definitely not expected. Okay. Oh, wait, why did I bottom that? That was wrong. That was definitely a mistake. Oh. God, that was so bad. Why the hell would I bottom that? So I don't, I can't attack. This doesn't give vigilance, does it? No, it doesn't. I don't feel pressure to play introduction to annihilation now. I mean, if he has removal, I lose. It is what it is. What is this academic probation? <laughs> yeah, well, that's fine. That's fine. Whatever. Uh, our, I think our opponent deserved to win that game because the deck's really, really good. I made a misplay. I mean, I, I would have still been alive here if I didn't bottom that card. Oh, no. Okay. I didn't get punished too bad. I'd still be dead. I'd still be dead. So it was a, it was a misplay, but it wasn't one that like would affect the outcome of this match.
So destroy target artifacts. So this could destroy the boots. I definitely want this. And I definitely want another copy of the size of denial. What do I take out? I think burying box is not that good. He already saw the fuddler, so I'm gonna take that out. Okay. I'm going to play Eureka Moment, hoping to draw two lands. Okay, well, at least we got one land. Uh, or I guess I'll attack with racing. Seven, seven. I think this is going to be pretty sick next turn. I still think I played this right. I mean, that's just. Yeah, nine nine over two bodies for four mana. You can't 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 do better than that. I'm actually going to chump. I'm actually going to chump my nine seven with the manifestation stage because I can get it back with either helix, and uh, get something else. Opponent's deck is. Excellent. So let's see, this is uh, 11 and he's got one blocker. So let's go either he looks. And he lost because he didn't keep back a blocker. Okay, I'll take the win. I will take the win. I think I'm gonna put in a, uh, take out the Vortex Runner. I don't think we're winning with cards like Vortex Runner. If I survive to the late game, I win anyway. And Vortex Runner is something that becomes almost like a win more card and it doesn't do a good job of blocking the early aggression. So I don't think I need it. 
seven. I mean, our opponent should have won that. Like, he, he needed to leave one creature back, and he chose not to. Sloppy play, I think. A win's a win, I'll take it. But we we were supposed to lose. No, no, no question about that. So, what do I get with field trip? Let's just get a fragment summoning. Let's pass keeping up Eureka moment and decisive denial. And I don't know what he's got planned, but this is a chance to make, make some use out of uh, decisive denial. In fact, I could play Eureka moment into decisive denial. All right. Okay, so now now we're gonna arcane subtraction and just fight with the Drake because I this this card can get us in trouble. Ooh, but maybe I want to play a yeah. I definitely want to play Quandrix, Pledge Mage. Yeah, let's just go for it. So let's go arcane subtraction, get a counter get intro to annihilation and then let's fight so that becomes a four four we get in for one and then we stop any graveyard shenanigans okay Zimone, I don't really wanna, I don't think I wanna play Zimone now. So what if I go this? So this is like three and then I have four mana. Cause I can't, I can't play Aether Helix and then Pledge Mage, but I can play a Cultivator and Zimone. Stack. I guess this is the more efficient play. Take action. So he's got plus three, plus one. I don't really care if he hits me. I guess I should still block with the Cultivator, right? Because Cultivator is a better target for Aether Helix to get from the graveyard. Maybe, I'm not even sure. Maybe Pledge Mage is still just better. Shaking in my boots. All right, so. So draw two, that's four. And then I have four more. Or I can go Pledge Mange, Ether Helix. I'm gonna get the turtle.
All right. Barring any unpleasant surprises, I think we got this. That was, that was very, very strange. I'm not sure what point of that was, but let's attack with Pledge Mage and Drake. Draw two. This is whirlwind denial. I don't care. Again, I have fractal summoning, but uh, yeah, that should just be game now. What? <laughs> why? Why would he? Why did he not cast that before it resolved? Okay, I, I got a free two two out of the deal. I'm fine. Happy with that. I think this is the right time for an 88 fractal summary. So five, six, seven, eight. Okay. All right, got there. Let's see if we can go for the back-to-back three. -back. No, that was a that was a stressful run. Some difficult decisions, not too many bad plays. But uh, yeah, the main reason for that three no is misplayed by our opponent by not leaving a creature back. <clears throat> 